So a question that I would ask you is, do you know how much full wall suction pressure is at your facility? And the reason why I ask is because I think that a lot of caregivers don't really know how powerful that the suction can be set at your hospital. And from, from various studies that we've looked at and, and talking to some of our local hospitals, it can be set as high as negative 635 millimeters of mercury of pressure. So I don't know if you've ever experienced that or if you've ever felt what that's like, but it is a significant amount of pressure. And there's no, there's no wonder why that if you suction with using that much pressure, it can cause a lot of trauma and bleeding in the tracheal tissue. One of the things that I've often observed in my practice is that a patient that's intubated for several days uh, that have been fre frequently suctioned, they will end up developing blood tinge in their sputum. So as you suction them, you'll get the normal secretions that you normally would, but you'll see that there will be little tinges of blood in there. And typically that is not because of a new pathology that they have, it's because they've developed that from the trauma from us root from suctioning them repeatedly over the course of several days. So we very, full wall suction pressure is extremely, extremely negative. So we need to be careful and we need to make sure we set it appropriately. So let's talk about now, how do we actually set that appropriately? And what I'm gonna do for you is demonstrate a couple of ways that we can do it. The first one is that we should always use what we call a clube to set. And what that means is that we should always remove the suction tubing from the actual suction catheter that we're using, occlude the end of it with our thumb, and then adjust the suction pressure as appropriate to get it down to, on, in adults, we wanna make sure it's less than a negative 150 millimeters of mercury. The other way is actually using a, a special type of, of suction regulator that's called push to set, where you actually press into the, the knob. As you turn the knob after you compress it, it will actually adjust the pressure on its own. So when you press the knob in, it actually is doing the occlusion process for you, and then you can adjust it. And what you're doing there is you're setting a pressure limit. And that is a really nice feature to have because it's actually doing that pro process for you so you're not actually having to remove any tubing. And you can do it right there at the suction regulator in one, in one move instead of having to, to take, away, take off pieces of tubing and occlude it. So another thing that I wanna demonstrate for you is how powerful full wall suction pressure can actually be when you suction. So what we have for you today, I'm ventilating a set of actual real pig lungs here with a mechanical ventilator and I have them on some, some pretty significant settings like you would find on a patient that has ARDS in the hospital. We have them on a low tidal volume and a really high PEEP. We have them on a PEEP of 20. And you see here that the lungs are inflated during ventilation. However, what I'm gonna demonstrate here is as I advance the catheter, I'm gonna apply suction at full wall and I'm only gonna apply it for a few seconds and I want you to watch at what actually happens to these lungs during this procedure. So as you can see, just a few seconds of suction pressure there, full wall suction pressure, will actually completely de-recruit the lung. So again, we shouldn't be using suction pressure that's too negative, and we definitely should not be suctioning patients free more frequently than, they, than is indicated. So I realize that this presentation so far has been about all of the negative things that can come from suctioning. And what I really want to discuss with you are how to prevent those things from happening. And really the way to do that is if, as long as we follow proper procedure, then we can avoid all these complications and hazards. So again, the first thing that we need to make sure is that we have an indication to suction. The best way to avoid complications of suctioning is to not suction someone when there's not an indication. However, the patients that have endotracheal tubes are gonna to need to be suctioned on occasion. So when we do that, we need to make sure that we follow a checklist. So one of the first things you should do once you have an indication is to pre-oxygenate them using 100% oxygen in adults. So most of the time on a mechanical ventilator, there's a button that you can push. So you'd press that button and it increases the FiO2 up to 100% for uh, usually two to three minutes. So what you should do is push the button, wait for about a minute or so, and then go ahead and suction them. And the reason for that is because as you suction them, you potentially are gonna cause a little bit of atelectasis and it can actually give them a potential a heart dysrhythmia if you don't do that. So you should pre oxygenate them for a few seconds before you, before you suction. Again, you should also use shallow suction. So you should always match up those numbers on the endotracheal tube with the numbers on the catheter like we described earlier. Another thing is you need to make sure that before every single suctioning procedure that you check to ensure that you're not using too much suction pressure. Uh, how many times do we go in, we set the suction pressure and another caregiver um, has come in behind us and maybe adjusted it for, for one reason or another. So the only way to ensure that it's being done, done appropriately every single time is to check it before every time that you suction. 
So to prevent atelectasis, we should either use the occlude to set or push to set suction procedure. We should use a pressure of less than 150 millimeters of mercury in adults. We should use a catheter that occludes less than 50% of the inner diameter of the endotracheal tube. And we should keep our suctioning duration to a minimum, which is less than 15 seconds. The best way to prevent the hazards and complications of suctioning is to make sure that you have a, an appropriate policy and procedure in place and follow it and hold people accountable to it. So you should always use either the occlude to set procedure that we discussed earlier or push to set depending on whatever technology that you have that you're using in your facility. So to summarize this presentation, hospital vacuum can be very powerful. Remember, it can be up to negative 635 millimeters of mercury. So as you saw from the pig lung demonstration, we should always make sure that we, we are checking that before every procedure. Endotracheal tube suctioning is not benign. As, as you can see, we can cause a lot of damage. We can cause atelectasis. We can cause all the direct airway trauma. When you use a higher than recommended suction pressure or inappropriately large suction catheter, it will increase the risks of those hazards associated with endotracheal tube suctioning. The only way to guarantee that a pressure limit is set on a suction regulator is to either use the occlude to set technique or the push to set technique at the suction regulator. I would like to thank you all for viewing this presentation. I hope that you find this information useful in your own practice. Please contact me anytime with any questions you might have. I'd be happy to hear from you. Thanks.